Hello, and welcome to Storytime in Nature. I'm Coral Bass with Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources. Today, we're in beautiful Lefis Key to talk about something that's not so beautiful. We are going to be talking about parasites. A parasites is any living organism, anything living, could be a plant, could be animal, doesn't matter, who lives off of another but gives nothing back. Okay? Or nothing known back. So, parasites can be all around us. There are thousands of parasites. But don't panic. Don't panic. We'll go over them. And the importance of what you can do with parasites. Good Halloween topic, right? In a book, we will be summarizing What's Eating You? Parasites, the Inside Story by Nicola Davies and illustrated by Neil Layton. Up a tree or down a hole, out to sea, in a puddle, somewhere hot or somewhere cold, every animal has a habitat, a place where it belongs, a place where it can find food and shelter and have its babies. you are a habitat. But there, there is a group of creatures whose habitats are not forests or seas or deserts. They live on or in the bodies of other animals. Their habitats are skin and hair, fur and feathers. Almost every living animal on the planet is just a walking habitat, a host to many parasites, and that includes us humans. But don't panic. Modern humans are too clean and well cared for to have lots of parasites. You certainly don't have 430. See, not panicking. So some of our um, parasites are ectoparasites. All right, and ecto means outside. So there's something like a flea or a mite. They hang out, and there's tons of them. I mean, and even certain animals. Uh, lice is another good example. Even certain animals are well known for having it. So, like purple martins have certain um, flies and certain lice that like to live on them. And some, and meet some endo um, parasites. So, check out our endo parasites. Those would be like worms. All right, or if a mosquito stings you, they can put uh, some parasites, like malaria, can go in, so diseases. But remember, don't panic, it's all good. So what makes a good parasite? All right, check this out. What makes a good parasite is their size and their adaptability, so their ability to change. So if you have a vertebrae like you and I do, find that vertebrae, it's on your back. Rub it right now. That's not going to be good because they stick to the same um, shapes and sizes. If your body changes over time, that makes a good um, parasite. So that's why snails, worms, fleas, things that change and have different life cycles, lots of insects, can make pretty good parasites. Not all. Getting aboard! So, living, living bodies are not the easiest places to live. Um, things do things that other habitats don't do. They move around, right? And so the first problem a parasite has to solve is how to get onto a habitat and stay there. Since most hosts are much bigger and faster than their parasites, this can seem as impossible as a mouse hitching a ride on a jumbo jet. Yet parasites manage it all the time. The most basic approach is to hang around and hope that one will pass by. This is exactly what ticks do. Okay, so here's our jumbo jet. That mouse trying to hitch a ride. But look at how ticks work. You can see it right here. So maybe on Monday they're hanging out on the leaf. Days pass. Something's coming. And he tries to jump on the foot, the back of that ankle, and misses that. 
and more days pass and, and then he hops onto something, he feels something coming by and he's able to eat. And then eventually we'll just fall off. Most fleas don't live on their host full time. They start life as a larva living in the host's bed. When the adult fleas hatch, they rely on warmth or movement to tell them there's a body nearby and then they start leaping and leaping and leaping. And they can leap all over the place from one to another to another to another until they find a nice cozy place. The perfect um, place for them, whether it be for cat fleas or ones that like pigs or burrowing owls. There are ones that specifically like dogs, so some like certain things. But hopping is a common way. So staying aboard. So certain fleas, like this guy right here, like to be on their rabbits. They hang out on the rabbits the whole time. That's where they like to be. All right, so they'll go and stay and go from one rabbit to another. And because rabbits reproduce so fast, every time a mama rabbit has it, when she has her babies, she then gives them this, her same um, fleas. And humans have something like this. It's called mites. And mites eat a lot of our hair follicles and some of our dead skin. All right? And so the older we are, the more likely we are to have them. That's why it's important we group, right? Huh. Lice, the stay-at-home specialist. So you certainly know about lice, and you've probably known someone who's had it. And Lice, the reason they're so bad is they leave bite marks and they bite into your body. Um, human head lice, otherwise known as cooties, are so good at living on the hair that they can't live anywhere else. So they can hide easily and they have claws exactly the right size to grab human head hair. They're incredibly tough and can survive washing with no difficulty at all. And if you manage to wash out the grown-ups, the eggs can live. So, and some will go inside, like our Indo ones. You can see all the different worms. They may not have eyes. They may not have anything but a mouth part and a, and a stomach, right? So, pretty grody. So, how can we combat this, right? It's a question. How? Oh, good grooming. It's all about good grooming. You might be feeling a little sick and a little uncomfortable about parasites using your body as your property. The good news is there's a lot that we can, and other animals can do to fight back. Ectoparasites, uh, like ticks, fleas, and lice, can weaken an animal and make it easy prey. So good grooming can mean the difference between life and death. So many, many, many animals groom. You can see that each of these guys are dreaming. Do you think they actually, the owl actually goes to the spa and puts cute cucumbers on the eye? Or maybe the herring combs his, his hair? Well, let's see. Well, I will agree with you. The heron definitely combs his, his hair. He did not hair, sorry, his feathers definitely combs his feathers. He's actually got a comb on the middle a toe to help him scrape the lice off so the lice won't be harming him, right? And then you've got on this side, all right, that is like that owl, he uses that to groom. He's got an extra toe right there that's grown together. And that will help him, and that's a ruse foot, sorry. And you look at the impala, they have their stripes on their uh, back, and those stripes actually attract the, the bug so that he can reach it. Smart, right? So he can then eat it. They think they're going to blend in, but no, that impala knows how to get them. All right, and another really cool one I have to show you is the owl. He doesn't go to the spa, but he brings in a snake, an insect-eating snake, and brings it to his nest. That way, or her, or her brings it to their nest. That way their babies are able to uh, 
to be insect free because they've got this little garter, like one of the little insect eating snakes eating from it. Pretty neat, right? Now in the ocean, it's a little different. They've got the cleaning wrasse company. All right, and wrasses are little fish that will go inside the mouth of bigger fish. And you see this all the time at aquariums, all right? They go inside the mouth, they go around the outside, and they eat all the dead skin and the dead particles. And they take care of a lot of our uh, parasites in the process. So they're really important. Another way is to take your medicine. Look at that. You know how mom and dad like to give you vitamins and tell you to take your medicine. Well, that's exactly what's going on here. And in fact, chimpanzees are known for taking a medicine as well. They use spiky leaves. See? The spiky leaves twice a day. They swallow the spiky leaves. They swallow the spiky leaves. And when they eat them, those spikes will actually cut up um, the worm that's in their body, and then they can get rid of it, and there's no harm to that. Nice. From what I understand, it's very, very bitter and tastes terrible. Or you can be like a caterpillar, right? We know monarchs. Monarchs are known for eating from the milkweed. They chomp, 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 and then these poisonous leaves will fix you right up. Mmm, boy! And they will actually prevent them from having parasites. So eating what something can also do you. So it's another way of taking care of yourself. Planet parasite. You mustn't go away with the idea that parasites are all bad. Because as we humans find out more about them, we discover ways in which they can help us, not just harm us. Some crop pests, for example, can be controlled with parasites, so farmers don't have to use as many chemicals, which might kill other wildlife too. Mealworms that were destroying cassava, the most important food crop in Africa, were killed off by bringing in a little wasp that is a parasite of meal bugs. Actually need, humans actually need parasites. It looks as if parasites are a vital part of nature, from whole habitats to single cells. Scientists study tropical forests have found that plenty of parasites is a sign that a jungle is doing well. Almost every cell in every plant and animal contains tiny grains called mitochondria that act like batteries, giving the cells energy. So, there are good reasons to keep them. Humans are only beginning to understand the ways in which parasites have shaped life on Earth. They are not just villains, but an amazing group of animals that have evolved complex and inventive ways of surviving in their chosen habitat. Cats. One thing's for sure, a planet without parasites would be a lot less interesting. What I love is what this one's saying. It's, I've got you under my skin. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? The end. As you can see, parasites are in nature. They're both inside bodies, outside bodies, and they're important. We don't know why they're all important. We still don't know all the mysteries that come around it. They're a little gross and a little disgusting <laughs> and a little funny in the same matter. But as long as we take our medicines and care for ourselves, we're not going to have our 430 different parasites. So, thank you for coming out and joining me today here at Lepis Key. Storytime in nature. I look forward to seeing you again on one of our next adventures. Have a great week. Bye.